we hear the word of God from 1 Samuel 3. <clears throat> now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But I, Eli said, I did not call you, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, he called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down and slept. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both the ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. Here I am. What is it that he told you? Do you do not hide anything from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. It then the, Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think they deserve a round of applause. Okay, obviously the key thing is discerning the word of God, but uh, any idea who the voice of God was there? Dave Walters. It's the first time in my ministry that someone in a congregation has said to me, I'll be hiding in the cupboard behind the door. <laughs> Thank you everybody for your uh, part in that, uh, bringing that word of God alive. And, and do go home or uh, have your Bibles now. We're in 1 Samuel 3. And now I'm going to invite uh, Joe and Lydia, who uh, I said to them, would you be willing to come and speak to us about how God speaks to us? And uh, they have brilliantly said yes to that. And I'm going to pray for you because you, you are fantastic. It's so good to have you come and bring God's word to us. So, Lord, we want to thank you for Joe and Lydia. Just be with them now. And, Lord, we thank you that you do speak to us. Use them uh, to speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you to Chloe for that quiz. That was excellent. Go ahead. Does God speak to us? Absolutely, yes. In Genesis chapter 2, we read that in the beginning, when God made Adam and Eve, he would stroll, meaning they'd have a chat, in the cool of the evening. God has been speaking to us from the beginning, and God has never ceased speaking to us. How does God speak to us? I like practical step-by-step -step advice, so Lydia and I are going to give you seven practical steps on how to hear God speaking to you. 
Before we do that, we must understand that it's a learning journey. When Samuel was a boy and he was working in the temple, he didn't recognize God's voice when he spoke to him. But later as a prophet, God spoke to an entire nation through him. Learning to recognize God's voice isn't a skill that we develop overnight because he speaks to us at different times, in different ways, and in different settings. Recognizing God's voice calls for spiritual maturity. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 4, the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. If our spiritual ears aren't developed yet, God will work with us until they are. So that's just like a phone call from someone you love. They don't have to say their name. You know who it is with just a few words because you recognize their voice. Don't limit God, just let God be God. When God spoke to Moses, he had to set a bush on fire to get his attention. Whereas he spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. He can speak to you, he can press thoughts on you, or he can speak through his word. Number one, listen. Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord when the Lord called him. God spoke when Samuel was lying down. He was quiet. If he was quiet, he could hear more clearly. Do we listen for God's voice? Not selective listening, not ignoring, not just hearing, not half listening, but really, really listening. God wants to have a uh, conversation with us, and that means a two-way conversation. God has a need, like teenagers, to be listened to. How many people really listen, or are we thinking about all the many distractions with just the general noises of life? What is it like to have a conversation with someone who won't let you get a word in edgeways? Just ask my home group. What would it be like if we asked Manda and Jude for advice and then I ran off without waiting for an answer? Are we doing this with God? Are you looking at Facebook or YouTube while praying? Put your phone away. Jesus said, shut the door when you pray. Not just the physical door, but the door in your head. Samuel went and lay down in his place and the Lord called to him. Samuel said, speak for your servant and the servant is listening. Try saying that to God this week and then listen. Number two, the Bible. There are two Greek words for the word word. Logos, and this means the mind or counsel of God. This is God's love letter to all of us. It is God breathed. This is his word written down for us to reference. Do you know anyone who knows the Bible off by heart? Manda? (laughs) Adam? No. Therefore, God wrote it down for us that we can go back and look at passages of it. This is God speaking to us generally. How do you know where to go in the Bible? Let's say I'm worried about a situation I am in. You can go to websites and apps like Bible Gateway and type in the word worry. That will suggest to you passages of the Bible and go to read about what God assures us about worrying. That is God speaking to us and telling us exactly what to do in our situation. In short, your Bible is the greatest success manual in the world. Number three, the Bible, rhema. The second Greek word for the word is rhema. Rhema refers to the spoken word. This is God speaking directly to each one of us individually. In Matthew chapter four, verse four, man shall not live by breed alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus is saying that God has daily bread for us. So every day we live by the rhema of God. God has something to speak to us every single day. How do I find the rhema? In your Bible. Sometimes you can read a passage in the Bible and it jumps and leaps out of the page and you think, oh my gosh, that means me. This is written just for me. If you want true understanding, meditate on the scriptures today. He can use other people to deliver rhema. God spoke repeatedly to Samuel, but Samuel was slow to catch on. Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy, even though Eli was not the one hearing God's voice. We can speak to others in our church family and ask for advice. God can deliver through your thoughts. If you have a thought that you think, wow, that's really good, I could never come up with that, that's the Holy Spirit talking to your spirit. Look at your thoughts, listen to your prompts, your feelings. How do I know it's God speaking and not the other one? So if you have a thought that you're not comfortable with, then you know it's not your flesh, because flesh just doesn't do uncomfortable. If it's something that hurts you or someone else, then it's the evil one, as it doesn't match God's word. If it's to pray for someone or help someone, that's the Holy Spirit. Remember, the voice of God matches the word of God. Number four, God doesn't usually yell. He called out to Samuel, though it doesn't say he yelled. Whisper speaks of intimacy because you usually whisper into somebody's ear because they are close. You have a close relationship. However, being human, how many times have you heard, dinner's ready? Not in our house. (laughs) As human, we can deal with walls and space and how big your garden is. The bigger the space, the more the walls, the higher the volume. 
God speaks in a whisper, so you have to get close to him. Sin creates a war between us and God, so we can't hear him. So if you've got something that gets in the way, remove it through prayer. Pray for forgiveness, clear the obstacles. You need to be able to hear him in the whisper. Number four, obedience. David said in Psalms 40, verse 8, I take joy in doing your will. When it comes to recognising God's voice, our response shouldn't be, when I get around to it, if I can fit it in or I'll think about it. What's that got to do with God speaking to us? Well, it's not very nice if you're speaking to someone and you ask them to do something and they answer it with, when I get around to it or I'll think about it. Would you want to have a conversation with them again? That's about doing, not listening to God. It's how God feels about speaking to you. Like when you say to a young person, tidy your room or put your clothes away. Let's move on. If you are obedient when God speaks to us, you will learn to hear him speak more easily. Number five, the present. The Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, as we said, our daily rhema. In the wilderness, God gave them food just for the day. Exactly. God never speaks about next week. Imagine the Holy Spirit emailing you saying, oh dear, you'd better stick with me next Tuesday. Can you imagine who would even get out of bed next Tuesday? Yeah, telling me something I need to remember for next week doesn't stick. If God told me what to say next Saturday, I'd never remember it. I've got a science test in between. Number six, be humble. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. God spoke directly to the boy Samuel because he was a humble boy. So I need to be humble and recognise who is on my side and then go back to number one and listen. I'm going to hear God's voice a lot better if I am humble. Number seven, signs and wonders. In Genesis 24, Abraham's servant had to find a wife for Isaac. He took his camels and went to the well. Genesis 24, verse 14 to 15, the servant at the well prays, if she says, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too, let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came to the well. And that's fast. Imagine I sent you all out into the middle of Touchwood in Soli Hall to find me a new husband. I won't tell Dad. How would you start? Oh my, that servant knew that he couldn't find a wife, but God could, and he agreed with God a code word. I I tried recently, I had a fork in the road that I met, and I asked God for someone to contact me from either road so I would know what road to go down. I received an email within 24 hours to know exactly where to go. How do you know that was God and not coincidence? Because when you pray, coincidences happen, and when you don't, they don't. So there's our seven suggestions for hearing God speak to us. Why not try at least one of those suggestions for hearing God's voice? And we'd love to hear your stories. So thank you for your great question. If you have any questions at all, please, please put them in the jar. And thank thank you you all for listening. Fantastic. One of the things that really struck me from there, and I'm sure there's plenty of things that would have struck you too, But God's word, what you hear from God, from his Holy Spirit, is never out of line with his word. So it begins with his word, doesn't it? It begins with us understanding his word. How do you know what you're hearing is of God unless you know what God's word is? We're going to sing. We are going to sing Stir of Passion. Um, And the verse is, breathe on me, Holy One. Come reveal your wonder now. Open wide my eyes to see. There's so much more. There's so much more in his word for us. And I think we just need to have that passion and that humility that they talked about, Joe Media talked about, to come to God, to understand his word, to dwell in his word, and to shut the door to everything else as we focus on him. So let's sing. Would you like to stand? We'll sing so much. Mm-hmm.